We all go through trials and difficulties. They kept their faith and trusted in him. They were given a sure foundation. Through the darkest moments, we never stopped believing God was near. of flames, we kept our faith. Well, what is up, Radiant Church? Is anybody excited to be at church today? Man, I am so glad that you're here today. My name is Aaron Burke, and I am the lead pastor at Radiant Church. We are one church in four locations across Tampa Bay with St. Petersburg joining us right now, and Tampa Heights joining us, Brandon joining us, those at South Tampa. Man, I am just so glad you all are here. And there's a special group that is with us at every location. It's those that are joining us for the very first time, and we just want to say, man, we hope it's been a great experience. We hope from the parking lot to getting that uh, orange bag at the guest center on the way in to donuts and coffee, checking your kids in. We hope the whole thing's been a great experience. And if you're looking for a good church home, I know you've heard it before, but I'll reiterate it one more time. I think you found it. Welcome home. We're glad that you're here. Come on, Radio Church at every location. Make them feel super loved. And, and I'll say this, uh, if you are a guest, you picked the perfect Sunday to be here. Uh, you couldn't have picked, I know if you are here last week, y'all are like, but you said that last week. I was lying last week. This week, no, I'm not, I wasn't lying. But it really is, it's my favorite Sunday. We do it every couple months where we do baptisms at the end of the service. And so we have 60 plus people, I think way more than that even, that have already signed up to get baptized across our locations today, where people are taking a bold step to go public with their faith. So I wanna say this, everybody's attention, every location. Maybe you're here today, and throughout this message, God will stir something in your heart to say, you know what, I'm ready to take this faith that's been private and make it public. And I'm telling you, we need you to do that today. We need, you, we need your testimony because I'm telling you, God is just starting to do something in your life and your faith goes to the next level when it goes public. So well, I'm gonna release them at the end of this service. When I do that, make sure you go also. We have clothes and, and shirts and uh, towels, everything you need to get baptized today. But we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate big, big at the end of every service. All right, take out that worship, God. Inside are some sermon notes. Are y'all ready for the finale of Faith in the Fire? Say yeah. Yeah. I hope you love this series. It's been a series that's so close to my heart. God gave it to me over the last couple of months as I had been going through some intense testing in life. And if you were going to do anything great for God, how many know you're gonna go through some testing? You're gonna go through some trials. Some of you guys, it looks like stuff in your marriage. Some of you guys, it's with your kids. Come on, how many know those kids will test you right there? And other, other people, it's at your job or, or in a struggle and an addiction. There's so many tests that are life that we have, and in Faith in the Fire, we've been looking at how to have faith, how to, have, how to be strengthened in the midst of fire in our life, and, and I hope you've learned something the last few weeks. Today, we're gonna wrap it all up, and, and the story goes that there's three guys that we have been looking at. They are Jewish boys that were raised in Israel, and they were taken out of Israel by the Babylonians, and the Babylonians took them out of Israel with the purpose of uh, bringing them on as slaves. And as he brought them out, they brought them into the Babylonian king's palace to serve. And they were tested time and time again. Babylon was the original sin city of the day. And so they're in the middle of sin city, struggling, and they're being tested. And a lot of you guys feel like that. You feel like it's just a season of intense testing. And these guys' names, so that we can hear them one more time, are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want you to say it with me. Ready? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I got to hear you at Brandon. I got to hear you at the Heights. Ready? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three guys are taken, and they're put in the king's palace, and they're bring, uh, brought all these different tests. The final test we brought up last week, where the king built a 90-foot-tall statue told everybody to bow down. These guys refused to bow down. They stood for what they believed in, and the king said, that's fine. I'm gonna throw you into a fiery furnace. That seems like a pretty extreme punishment. But as he got the fiery furnace ready, they said, listen, our God's gonna save us. 
We know he can. We know he will. And then they said that bold statement last week, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to worship you and your false gods. So they make this bold statement of faith, and I wish the story ended there. Wouldn't that be a great place for the story to end? Like, and everybody lived happily ever after. That's not how the story ends. The, the furnace gets even hotter, and let's show what happens in the story. King Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 19, if you have, Dan, if you have your Bible, look at Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar, after they've made that bold statement of faith, was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. He kind of liked him at the beginning. Now he's like super upset with them. And he says he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter. Say, that's hot. Yeah, you never thought you'd say that in church, wouldn't you? All right. He ordered the furnace seven times hotter and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men were wearing their robes and their trousers and their turbans and their speedos and their spanks and their skinny jeans. Come on, I'm trying to contextualize it for you guys, all right? And they were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. And at the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men firmly tied, they fell into the fire. We're at a peak of our story of these three guys where they're bound up, they have been refused to, to submit to this, this false God and they're thrown into the fire and Nebuchadnezzar sees something in the next verse that is life-changing that I need you to see today because a lot of you don't understand how powerful this next part is. So I want you to lean into it. Look what happened. The Bible says it like this. Then Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement. Everybody's watching this thing, and Nebuchadnezzar looks out and sees something nobody else saw. He says, he asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown in the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, but look, I see, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. He looks in this situation and he sees something that was there all along. I want your attention for just a second. The world is watching as you go through the fire that you are going through right now. They're watching how you're handling that divorce. They're watching how you deal with that setback. They're watching how you're struggling in your finances. And here's what they're going to do. By the time the story's over of your life, they're going to leap to amazement to say, I thought they were doing it alone, but I realized there was another person with them the entire time. God has not left you. God has not forsaken you. You you can't get through this thing. Come on, give them better praise than that. So here's the truth I want to give you today. Simply write it down in your notes. Week four, the finale of our Faith in the Fire series is this statement. You are not alone. You're not alone. A lot of you guys, the fire seems seven times hotter. The job is struggling. The marriage is on the rocks. I want you to know you're not alone in this thing. You might feel like you don't know how to raise those kids. You're not alone. God is with you. Let's pray. Lord, speak to us. Change us over these next few minutes and let us leave here totally different than the way we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, amen, amen. amen. There's been some news that's kind of rocked our nation the last couple of weeks as um, things have happened that you can't even, you can't avoid it. They're everywhere it seems. You can't even turn on the news. You can't go on Facebook without seeing this thing that's been talked about so much and Really, the, the behind the scenes of it, not to get political, I try not to get political from the stage, but I feel like I have to address it, is behind the scenes, there's a small group of people that were tired of really from what they believe being told a lie. So these small groups of people just decided to, to reveal truth to the masses and to do something to finally, to finally dispel these lies that have been told. And obviously, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's everywhere. It's being talked about everywhere. And it's the, the raid on Area 51. <laughs> I had some of you guys like super nervous. Like, <laughs> we have some politicians in our earlier service. They were texting me like after the service, like we are so nervous for a second. I'm like, no, I wouldn't go there. Anyway, <laughs> the raid on Area 51 where this one guy got so frustrated with kind of being, feeling like the government was hiding a secret from him about aliens existing at this military base called Area 51. 
So what he did is he came up with a plan that he would gather a bunch of people and they called it a raid on Area 51. And here's what he did. He created a Facebook event and, and he said, listen, uh, we're going to storm Area 51. We're going to run in and rush it. And then here's what we're going to do is, and he said this statement. He said, because they can't stop us all. <laughs> Bold statement of faith right there on Facebook. So this man gets, gets the Facebook event, shares it with his friends and family, and a couple of them like it, but they're not the only ones that liked it. Over two million people said that they were going to attend the raid on Area 51 that happened just over a week ago. I, as a pastor, went on to the Facebook event like I should and looked to see which one of our crazy Radiant Church members <laughs> said they were going to the event. The ones I expected were the ones that were going. <laughs> you can't hide. Heights, anyway, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> we, we, it was one of those events. What did they want to do? People were ready to go to find out the truth. Now, the event ended up failing. If you didn't hear the news, it was not 2 million people that showed up, not 200,000, uh, not even 200. <laughs> uh, about a hundred, between 75 and 150 people showed up to the desert there and in alien costumes and hung out at the gate of Area 51 <laughs> to not raid the event. I wonder how passionate we are when it comes to revealing truth in our lives. So many people, I believe, have bought into a lie, and it's a lie bigger than whether Area 51 has aliens or not, or bigger than the greatest conspiracies out there today. It's a lie that, is, that we have believed for years and years, and a lot of you guys walked into one of our services today believing this lie, and here's what it is. I want you to get it. Ready? It's simply the lie that I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm, a, I'm dealing with this divorce alone. I'm dealing with this addiction alone. I'm raising these kids alone. I'm struggling with my finances alone. I am alone. It is a lie that so many people have bought into in our culture today. They go, I feel this way. I feel empty. I feel alone, so I must be alone. And what do we do? We say things like, man, where is God in this situation? Where's God? And you, t you looked at your bank account on Friday morning and said, God, where are you? <laughs> we, we do it with big situations and we do it with small ones. You're in a service like this and you're celebrating and you're worshiping and, and giving God your best and then you leave here and you go to the Taco Bell drive through to get yourself a little, little Taco Bell pizza, uh, Mexican pizza that you're all excited about and the line in the drive through is so long, it won't move, it's frustrating and you throw up your hands and you say, God, I thought you were with me, why have you forsaken me? We all have those moments where we feel like God has left us and I wanna dispel this lie in each of your lives today to don't you understand that we serve a God who is not distant. We serve a God who is not far away. He's not up in heaven twiddling his thumbs waiting for you to make the right decision. No, we serve a God who is actively present in our situations. He's actively, whether you feel it or not, we serve a God who is with us, church. And no matter what you're going through, no matter how hot the fire feels, God is with you. Can I get a good amen? We see this truth all throughout the scriptures. Deuteronomy says it this way. As God's people are about to go into enemy territory to possess the promised land, God speaks and says, be strong and courageous. How? There's few of us, there's many of them. The odds are against us, but then God says, do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Here, here's why, for the Lord your God goes what? Oh, say it with me, he goes what? He goes with me, he's not a God that sends you out. He's not up in heaven going, well, I'll see how they do. No, 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 he's a God who is with us. When Jesus came to earth, God, they gave him the name Emmanuel, which means he is God with us. He is near us. And then he says a, a promise that I need you to hold on to. He says, never, he will never leave you, nor what? Let's say that with us at every location. St. Pete, shout it out with me. Trinity, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. Let's say it louder, ready? He will never leave you, nor forsake you. One more time loud, ready? He will never leave you, nor forsake you. I want you to understand today that we serve a God who is with you at all times. Because we can believe it in the good times. Do you believe it in the bad ones? 
I, I've stopped asking myself a question, like I mentioned earlier, that I think is so wrong that we ask. We ask the question, God, why have you left us? God, why aren't you with me in this situation? You're dealing with loss, you're dealing with death. God, where, why aren't you with me? The Bible says it this way. Proverbs 3, 5 is one of the most famous verses in the Bible. It says that we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. You know that. You've heard that verse. I've preached it here dozens and dozens of times. The key to your sanity and your peace is to trust God. So how do we trust God? There's an easy solution for it. Look at verse six. He says it like this. In all of your ways, everything you do, shout that word out, what? Acknowledge. Acknowledge. So here's what you need to do. You gotta stop asking why is God, where is God at? And start looking at the situation and go, God, where are you in this problem? Where are you in this? It's not, it's not God, why have you left us? It's God, while I'm in this struggle, where are you at in the middle of all this thing? Can you acknowledge him in both the good times and the bad times? Can you be someone that, that will really lean into the fact that no matter how bad and how hot the fire gets, God hasn't left you? You go, well, Aaron, I feel alone. Feeling alone is something we all deal with, but let me just remind you, we do not live by our feelings, we live by faith. So if you feel alone, I want you to know that is a feeling that is not the truth. Loneliness is a real issue in our society today. Write it down. Counselors have said this. They call loneliness the emotional epidemic of the decade. So you have a massive group of people who are dealing with major loneliness in their life. And I think many of you guys have dealt with it. And here's what loneliness has done. Loneliness has made us believe the lie that nobody's with us. So you look on Facebook and you're sitting there and while you're in your room by yourself alone, all of your friends are out and they're putting statuses on, they're all bowling and laughing and putting the highlights of their life online and you're sitting at home eating a pint of ice cream watching Downton Abbey going, where is my friends, why am I all alone? Just saying that happened to somebody, I don't know. <laughs> Might have been me, but you know the idea. We all have these moments where we, we feel like we are alone. And here's where I've, I've progressed in a little bit of spiritual maturity. Because if I truly believe that God is with me at all times, then, there, then, then there's times where I might feel lonely, but I want you to get this, there's never a time that I'm alone. So, so your spouse might not be there, and your, your kids might be busy, and, and, and you might be still single, but I want you to know, you can be single and not alone. Because, because we serve a God who's with us no matter what we feel. Here's what I've learned in my life. When I have those feelings of loneliness, loneliness, maybe, just maybe, and this might be a stretch, but just lean in, maybe, just maybe, God gave me those feelings. Why? Because maybe those feelings of loneliness will draw me closer to my time with God. So maybe, write it down in your notes this way. When you are lonely, here's what I would challenge you to do. Turn it into alone time with God. So instead of sitting there being frustrated that nobody else is with you, here's the good news, the most important person in the universe is with you. So they might not have invited you, but God is still with you in that moment. So lean into the fact that while I might be lonely, I can turn it into a long time with God. Come on, give them better praise than that. So I'm gonna lean into my devotion life and I'm gonna lean into my time of prayer and lean into my time of worship because loneliness can do this. Write it down in your notes this way. Loneliness is for your benefit when it forces you to draw companionship from God that you would normally try to draw from other people. That's some good preaching right there. Because a lot of you guys are so frustrated. You go, Aaron, I feel like nobody's with me. God's with you. So maybe that aching feeling of loneliness, which we've all felt at times, is God's way of saying, draw close to me because while those people are not with you, I am with you. And I'm telling you, he's better than any boyfriend, any girlfriend, any spouse, any, any, any friend. I'm telling you, he'll be close to you during those times and you want that vibrant, real relationship with God. He's with you. So all right, let's back to our boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're about to get thrown into the fiery furnace that it's seven times hotter than before. And they, as they go into it, Nebuchadnezzar stands up in disbelief as they sit there and goes, there's somebody else in the fire. I believe God was with them the entire time. But here's, here's an important fact that I just don't, it's not in your notes, but just let you get this. God, in my life, I've realized God is most visible when times are most difficult. So a lot of people like to avoid the difficult seasons in their life and not realizing it is during those difficult seasons, if you've ever been through one, 
where you'll realize that is where God is most visible in your life. It's during the, the most heated moments, the, most, the biggest struggles, that God is most real in all of our lives. So everybody sees that, that God is with them at this moment, and it should bring us some, some confidence. It should bring us some truth today that no matter what you go through, God is with you. You are not alone. So let me give you some truths to close out this series, and I hope you love this series. I hope you're sharing it with your friends. Some truths to walk away with today, to understand when the fire of testing happens, here's some truths we can understand because God is with us. Number one is simply this. Because God is with me, I simply just won't stress about setbacks. I'm not gonna stress about setbacks. This, let's just be very real. The fire was a setback for their life. It was not on their five-year goal plan for them to be thrown into the fire right there. It wasn't, it wasn't the strategy. They didn't wake up that morning and go, you know what, I have a great idea of what we can do today. No, 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 the fire was a setback, and we've all dealt with setbacks. Radiant Church, we as a church, if you've been here for any amount of time, we've dealt with setbacks after setbacks, facility issues, financial issues, struggles that we've had as a church, and God's doing amazing things, but there's always those setbacks, and I used to hate the setbacks. I used to stress, I would toss and turn, I would get have anxiety about them, but I realized the more I understand that God is with me, the less I stress about the setbacks. Let me show you the, the passage because it's so stinking good. Look what he says in Daniel. He says, look, they're walking around and they're, they're, they're walking around the fire and they're simply unharmed. They're unbound. They're, they're sitting there just relaxing in the middle of the fire. And it looks like there's the son of God right in with them. How is this possible? They're in there with Jesus and they're in the midst of the, the worst situation in their life. And they're like, uh, High five, whoa, cheering each other on. This is fun. We're walking around the fire with God himself. There's no stress here. Why? They're having a party. It's the hottest party in town. <laughs> it's my comic relief for the day. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not stressed. Why? Because it's a temporary setback. Let me tell you, here's the good news about setbacks. Setbacks are seasonal. So a lot of you guys, you're so frustrated about the setback. Let me tell you, the setback with God is simply a setup for something greater he wants to do in your life. So let me show you it. It says it like this, verse 26. And he goes up and Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come on, come, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew something that you need to know. If God is with you, no matter how bad the fire is, how bad the struggle is, he didn't bring you to it to kill you. He brought you to it to bring you through it so that you're stronger on the other side. You're more victorious on the other side. He didn't bring you this far to kill you now. There's something great about the fact that we can embrace setbacks. It's like this bow and arrow. Now, I'm not an archer, but let's try this thing out, okay? So uh, this thing, by the way, has a very intense uh, point on it. And so I apologize if you get hit. So if there's a one moment in our service where you should not doze off, it is right now. Because this is quite dangerous. The arrow's purpose is to go forward. It is to propel. It is to get to the next level. It is to, to move forward. That's the whole mission of our church. We want to move you forward to what God has for your life. But I want you to know, here's what, what's the way an arrow works is the only way for it to go forward is to have a period of time where it's drawn backwards. Nobody likes to draw back periods of time. Nobody likes the, the financial setbacks. Nobody likes the, the seasons where you're kind of in the dark. Nobody likes it when the relationship seems to end. And so we pull back, and it's almost like God, for some of you guys, you feel like I've been getting pulled back for years and years and years. It's setback after setback after setback. Guess what? With God, every little setback is simply him pulling you backwards so that he can what? Launch you forward. I'm telling you, God, I'm gonna do it again because it's so stinking good, right? He, a lot of you guys, you need to embrace the pullback. Embrace the fact that you're in that difficult season. Embrace it because the further you get pulled back, the greater he's gonna launch you forward to something he's got for your life, to some kind of greatness. Come on, give him better praise than that. Uh, I'm just not gonna stress about the setbacks. I mean, I'm, not, I'm gonna sleep good at night. Because I know that if I'm in this fire, God's in it with me. 
He's fighting cancer with you. He's dealing with that marriage issue with you. He's helping you raise those kids. God is with us. Number two, here's another one. Ready? Because God is with me, I can thrive in any trial. I'm telling you, I'm not going to just get through it. I can thrive through it. I can enjoy, like, I, I, I actually can enjoy it a little bit. I can have a smile on my face. Why? During these things. Because I'm a believer. And as a follower of Jesus, I understand that if the trial came to my life, which I'm a firm believer, I don't think God causes them, but I do think God uses them, and we can thrive through them. Let me, let me show you. It's so crucial. It says it in the scriptures that our guys are sitting there. They, they defy the king. The king gets so upset, he turns it up seven times hotter. Some of you guys, you feel like that's the, that's the trial you're in right now. It's seven times worse. The debt, seven times worse than you thought it would be. The, the marriage struggle's been seven times longer than it would be. You're, you're, you're seven pounds bigger than you thought you would be. You know what I mean? It's seven pounds. It's seven or something. So, so in your life, there's, there's a struggle that's bigger than you thought it would be. But these guys are bound and tied up. And here's what the, the King Nebuchadnezzar says. He says, get the strongest men in Babylon. Gather them together and have these guys Throw them in the fire so that there's no way that these guys could have gotten out of it. So the strongest men get together. They grab Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They open the fire. And the scriptures told us that because the fire is so hot, it consumed the three, the guys, the strongest men in Babylon that were throwing them into the fire. Here's the word of God from somebody in today. Listen, it might kill other people, but it's not going to kill you. I'm preaching to somebody today. That divorce might have killed other people. It's not going to kill you. That struggle in your finances might have killed somebody else. It's not going to kill you. That issue might have taken everybody outside in your family. No, you are a child of God. God is with you. It will not kill you. Give them some praise today, church. You can thrive. You can thrive in this thing. Let me show you this. Daniel chapter 3, verse 27. Look what happened. It says, and the, the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the royal advisors crowded around him. And they saw, look what they saw, that the, their, their, they had not, the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Can you do a big sniff for me? Oh, I hope you wore deodorant today, all right? So everybody just smelled it. Smell means a lot. I, so, you know what? You, you can always tell. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and you just like, and it just smells, you know what I mean? And you, you, you're in the house going, I hope I don't smell like this the whole rest of the day. You know what I mean? Like, especially if they have cats. You know what I mean? It's just a, no offense to cats people, but there was a Krispy Kreme right next to my high school growing up. And it was one of the oldest Krispy Kremes in the nation. And it was like run down, gross, but it had the big conveyor belt and the donuts were there. It was awesome. So in, when you went in this Krispy Kreme, for some reason, it smelled so bad. It was some kind of weird, distinct smell. So whenever you were in there, if it was five minutes, it doesn't matter, you would walk out of that place, and for the rest of the day, everybody could tell you were at Krispy Kreme. So you would try to lie, because you don't want to say you go to Krispy Kreme every day, but you would show up to school, and everybody's like, really? Again? You're there again? Like, and you're like, I promise I didn't do it. They're like, you have, you have, you know, glaze on your mouth right now. Like, and the smell is unbearable. Hear, hear me out at every location. I think there's a lot of people that you're walking through the situation you're in right now, and you're so frustrated because you're going to go, I'm going to smell like disappointment. I'm going to smell like, like divorce. I'm, I'm going to smell like a failure. I'm going to smell like I didn't get that promotion. And everybody's going to know. But listen, when God is with you, remember, you can thrive through any trial. So here's the great thing about God. When you come out of your situation, you don't come out of it smelling like the situation. You come out smelling like the Savior that brought you out of that thing. I, I, love, I, I love a good fragrance. I, I love it when my wife puts on a good little perfume for me. I, I walk up and I'm like, ooh, baby, I like that. Something about a good, good fragrance, a good cologne, a good perfume. I'm telling you, you guys are going to come out of your trial, and people are going to walk up to you and go, ooh, what is that new scent that I smell today? That smells like forgiveness. Ooh, that one smells like grace right there. 
Oh man, that smells like victory. Some, somebody, somebody in this place, you got that new fragrance called the best is yet to come. Like you just put it on your life. Why? Because God will get you through that thing and you will walk out of there stronger than you were. Smelling like roses, baby, because God is for you. Come on, give them some praise today. You're gonna smell better after this thing. Man, I love this series. Number three, last one. Because God is with me, here's what I've realized, that my test will turn into my testimony. I hate going through tests. I hate going through struggles. I hate dealing with messes. But I've realized in my life that that's what God builds our testimony off of. Everybody wants the testimony. Nobody wants the test. Everybody loves the stage. Oh, put me on the stage. Nobody wants to struggle. Everybody's desiring the ministry. Nobody wants the mess. Everybody wants the potential, but it comes only after the pain. I want you to know that if you feel like you've gone through some difficult stuff, maybe, just maybe, this is God's way of building an unbelievable testimony for the world to see. This is what God does. I don't, I don't again, think he caused the fire, but I do think what the enemy caused to destroy God's people, God used to build his people. So he thought the fire was going to kill them. God looked at the fire and said, that right there is gonna be the very thing that promotes them to the greatest ministry they ever had in their life. You have no clue how God's gonna promote you after this thing. Let's close it out, look what he says. He says it like this, the Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego can be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no God can save this way. Hey, let me just tell you, there's no God that can save like my Jesus. There's nobody that can rescue. You can try good vibes and you try cool energy and you try all those other things. No, no, no. Jesus is still the savior that you are looking for in your life today. He can save you. Nobody can save like him. And the last verse in our Faith in the Fire series says it this way. Then the king, what? No, Aaron, you wrote that in there trying to make your message good. Now, this is the word from God for somebody in here today. The king did what? Oh, say it at Brandon. The king what? Come on, say it in St. Pete. What? He did it at the Heights one more time. Every location is trying to He did what? He promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and begin to go in the province of Babylon. Here's what he did. He said, listen, if God delivered you from that kind of thing, then you deserve a promotion. It was only after the pain, after the pain, they got the promotion. And I've come to declare over somebody's life today, here's the word from God. The pain has been real. The fire has been intense. The struggle seems overwhelming. Maybe, just maybe, this is God's way of promoting you to something bigger, to something greater, to another level that you never thought was possible. Can we give our better praise than that today, church? Every location, stand to your feet for just a second because I want us to declare something over your life, over our church. We're gonna do baptisms in just a second at every location, but right now, I want you to know that God has not brought you this far to fail you now. I love this song we've been singing the last few weeks at our church, I'm gonna see a victory. We're gonna sing it again together because a lot of you guys, you, you have to speak it in the midst of the fire. You can't actually see right now in that fire. You're, you're clouded by the smoke, by the frustration, by the overwhelming issue you're in. But I want you to know, right next to you in that fire is Jesus himself. He's with you in that struggle. He's with you in that marriage. He's with you at that job. He's with you in that diagnosis. When you're sitting there and you're going from, from kidney dialysis to dialysis to dialysis, God is with you in the midst of this. And you need to declare it over your life that I'm gonna see a victory. Come on, sing it out, every location. I'm gonna see a victory. Come on.
it, church, at every location. Do you believe it today? You're gonna walk out of this thing stronger than you were before. Everybody's standing at every location. Listen, I want you to have a moment with God right now where the peace that passes all understanding guards your heart and your mind to know that you are not alone no matter what you're going through. Lord, I speak and just pray for your people right now. I pray that your people would, would understand there is another man in the fire. There's another man while they're dealing with that battle. There's another man as they struggle with that grief. There's another person as they're, they're dealing with that, that disappointment. God, you have never abandoned us. You have never forsaken us. And when we feel lonely, tell them, God, we will use that to lean into our alone time with you. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you right now. Man, the presence of God is in this place. So many people you, somebody in here you can't even grasp this idea because your father abandoned you you have no no connection you with earthly parents and you go how in the world can a god never leave me when my family died? i want you to know god is better than that god has never left your side even in your darkest moments alone he is with you he's with you in the fire that test is going to turn into a testimony for the world to see Lord, continue to your ministry of your people, God. Lord, where people feel like they want to give up in the midst of the fire, let them just understand, have the assurance that you are with them right now. With every eye closed and every head bowed, there's another group of people here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know you can. And today is your moment of opportunity to say, I don't want to do life alone. I don't want to, I don't want to do life alone. I don't want to do life in my sin, separated from God. No, today's your moment of salvation to say, you know what, I'm going to give Jesus my life. With every eye closed, every head bowed, that's you today. You say, Aaron, I'm ready to surrender my life to Christ. Today's my day of salvation. On the count of three, I want you to throw that hand up. Wave it at me. Put it right back down at every location. Ready? One, two, three. Hands going up all over the room. So many people making massive decisions to say, I'm giving my life to Christ. Just right there. As your hand went up, wave it at me. Put it right back down. Pray this first. Say, God, I give you my life. I don't want to be alone anymore. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sin. Forgive my past. Forgive my mistakes. Just tell them to say, God, give me a fresh start. Lord, I pray for every person that raised their hand that this be their moment of commitment. Tell them this. Say, God, I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, can we celebrate with dozens of people across Tampa Bay? Made the best decision of their life. Here's, here's what I want you to do, all right? We're, we're about to release everybody that's getting baptized today. We have plenty of time. You want to see this. It's going to be a huge celebration at every location. But here's what I'm going to do. Before I release them, there's other people in here. Maybe you just made a decision for faith today. You made a decision to follow Jesus. Take it public. Maybe you walked in to any location and you say, I, I wasn't prepared to get baptized, but God want, is pulling your heart right now. We're gonna release you. We're gonna release everybody that's getting baptized. On the count of three, we're gonna go wild. We're gonna go crazy as they go and get ready. And then we're gonna baptize people at every service. Ready? If that's you, God's pu pu pulling on your heart, saying go public. Make sure people know that. Don't, don't let that test stay hidden. Let it be a testimony for the world. That's what baptism does. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, let's give it up for those that are getting baptized today. Head out to the foyer. If you're getting baptized, everybody getting baptized, head out to the foyer, we'll get you ready. And our location pastors are taking over right now. Come on, ready, can we thank Pastor Aaron for that powerful word? What in the world? Real quick, you can be seated right now. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, my heart's so stirred and so full for today, all morning long in each service. We still have so many services to go. People have been making that step. And I looked up at the, the sign-up sheet this morning. Everyone who signed up to be baptized. Radio, we have a total all across at all of our locations. 62 people getting baptized. Come on, give God some praise for that. I mean, that's such a big deal. That's 62 people. Listen, 32 of those are right here in South Tampa alone. That's 62 people who've said yes to Jesus Christ. That's 62 people who once were broken, who once were bound. They've accepted Jesus. Their life has been transformed, and they're making that public declaration of faith. Can I tell you today, that could not have happened less for the grace of God and your generosity. 
And we want to say thank you for that. Listen, every single time you give, it's going towards reaching people for the kingdom of heaven. People whose marriages are falling apart. People who are bound by depression and bound by addiction. They're encountering Christ through your giving. So thank you for your generosity today. We have three ways for you to give. First one is there's a, a, a giving envelope attached to the seat in front of you. Take that, put your information on there, credit, debit card information, all that stuff. You can fill out on there, drop it in the bucket in a minute. You can text the number on the screen. It's super easy, super convenient. You can come in each way, each week, text the amount, and boom, it's done. Or you can go to our website, weareradiant.com. Thank you again for your giving. I'm going to pray and bless the offering. Then we're going to move to baptism. Father, thank you for each person in this room, Lord, who's giving faithfully week in and we out to the work of the Lord. Father, I declare your blessing on the finances. Lord, I pray that you would multiply as they give. Let it be given back unto them, Father. In the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen.